the the media got fucking mega bent out of shape, right? Because Donald Trump did this um, social media summit, right? I don't know if you saw this. Uh, well, basically, <laughs> he invited a bunch of fucking shit posters and uh, influencers, I guess you would call some of them, media commentators and pundits, all to the White House. I watched the whole thing. There was live streams. Incredibly, it happened on the same day that Twitter went down. Um, which, just a coincidence that Twitter is down for fucking maintenance just while we're about to have all these live periscopes of Donald Trump talking about how he's going to fucking uh, stop social media bias. And again, look, listen, um, I know a lot of people want to fucking deny the, uh, you know, that this social media bias is going on. I get it. I understand it. We're not, we are now starting to see actually how it's all kind of turned and what people were laughing at you know, when it was like Paul Joseph Watson having a Facebook page removed or whatever, like six months ago, or him not being allowed, his, his content not being allowed to be posted to Reddit. Um, we're now starting to see the effect of the people. There was a, there was a channel uh, called Three Arrows, which um, Tim Pool really uh, dropped the ball a little bit in this one. I kind of felt a little bit kind of gross watching his, the way he kind of covered it because it was very, <clears throat> it was, it was, it was full of misinformation. Um, you know, he presented this channel as being like an anti-fascist channel, like it was an Antifa channel. That's literally what he said in the video about it. YouTube now bans like top Antifa channel. It absolutely isn't. It talks about the historical uh, rise of fascism. It talks about some of the inherent uh, contradictions and some fascism ideology. It talks about some current affairs. Uh, it's run by a German dude, I think. So obviously it's very pertinent to his interests. I've watched his videos. I think they're pretty good. I think they're well done. I think they're very well researched. Uh, and certainly there's nothing inflammatory um, there. And then a lot of people as well got on this guy's back uh, and, basic, and basically said, you know, ha, 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 you were gloating at other people, Three Arrows, like never had. Like I went through his entire Twitter account to see if there was any time he'd ever sort of gloated about other people being censored. He hadn't. Um, so it was a very bizarre angle of attack. But anyway, the, the long and the short of it is this guy had his entire channel, right? So he had his channel... Uh, put in like he had a community strike youtube online said oh hey can you give us some details and we'll look into it then they deleted his entire channel then they restored it then they deleted it again and now it's restored again it's like it was a complete clusterfuck because this is just where youtube are at i've said it many times it doesn't matter if you're doing like a paul joseph watson polemic um about you know why paris isn't like paris anymore or you're doing a critique of how the the GOP are, sim uh, are similar to the uh, National Socialist Party of the 1930s. It doesn't matter what you're doing now. YouTube would rather you didn't do it on their platform. The end. They don't like politics being on their platform. It complicates things. It makes business tricky. What they want, the only people they want to talk about politics are the big corporations with the big woke politics and the big news agencies that use politics to basically lie to people so they can continue, so they can act as operatives for whatever government behooves them to get in power. Those guys can talk about politics all day long. John Oliver, Stephen Colbert, they can say whatever the fuck they want. You get demonetized for it and you'll get community strikes for it. And it doesn't matter anymore now whether you're left or right. So the concept of like w w the, the bias is becoming a myth because basically YouTube are planting the fucking flag in the soil and saying, listen, we actually don't give a fuck anymore. We're tired of constant negative headlines about how we're radicalizing people. We're tired of constant negative headlines about how we're biased to the left. We're, we're just tired of it. We're and, and it doesn't matter because the I, I feel like it has gone too far. The Project Veritas thing blew up in a big way. And even though there has been zero new information <laughs> coming out from the Project Veritas thing, which, fuck, thinking about it, we still haven't even covered it, have we? Or whatever. Uh, there's been like zero new information coming out from the Project Veritas thing. Like stuff we already knew. Like he was going, leaked. Like <laughs> James O'Keefe is going, leaked documents show that uh, an internal memo tried to get Breitbart removed from Google AdSense. Yeah, everybody knows. We knew, we knew about that years ago. We knew about when that happened. Like 
is this is this a fucking story um it's not a story it's like but but now under this constant barrage of they have tried to influence elections they have tried to do favors for uh, democratic um leaning you know kind of uh, american influencers and politicians and content creators unfortunately the reality of basically characterizing anything that's vaguely critical of progressive thought as hate speech has basically led to the right wing uh which by the way they're in power right now um looking to put this legislature in which i don't feel comfortable with because now effectively it if they do remove all the safe harbor laws and all on all the rules and special public uh, dispensations that um social media platforms get because the rule is we are not publishers we're basically the telephone the te you know the telephony company doesn't censor your conversation it doesn't say it doesn't interrupt you while you're having a conversation and you're going yeah well you know immigration in it and brexit means brexit you know the phone company doesn't fucking say stop that conversation right there sir and we're shutting down your telephone line you're now not allowed to have a telephone line from our company and don't worry we're all on the, each other's board so no telephone company is giving you a telephone line so if that was happening right there would be uproar about it but people don't people keep hiding behind this whole thing about oh social media are uh, private companies yeah they're private companies like, like t telephone companies are but there are rules that they have to abide by when it comes to um you know with, when they act as a publisher when they intervene with what you can and can't say on their platform so suddenly um, you've got all these other things coming in. You've got antitrust stuff coming up. You've got fucking, you know, whether or not these protections need to be removed. Um, you know, because it's been proven in multiple lawsuits that these companies collude with each other and do each other favors. Again, like with the Project Veritas thing for the Pinterest leaks, where YouTube removed it, Pinterest removed it, Reddit removed it, and they were all parroting the exact same line. There's a privacy violation. If undercover yeah, journalism, journalism constitutes a privacy violation, That's right. corruption will never be exposed ever again, by the way, guys. So, um, so it's a terrible precedent to set from these companies. But anyway, because it was a Trump speech, because it was a Trump speech, it was just absolutely lacking substance. He was all over the place. He was talking about fucking, you know, some of you guys, the memes you come up with. I don't know, like Charles Bronson now. Some, some of the memes you come up with are really out there, really out there. I understand why some of you were banned. And, you know, he's talking about fucking James Woods one minute. It's like, listen what are you actually going to do? Like, what's the fucking policy? But instead it was like, it was, it was more of a backslapping fucking exercise where, you know, all of the fucking guys who were in that deplorable crew got to basically have a day in the White House and this really pissed off the media. I mean, it unbelievably pissed them off. Um, basically, uh, I mean, there was, there was just, well, let me, let me show you the first thing that happened, right? So there was this altercation uh, that sort of, uh, sprung up between um, Sebastian Gorka. You might like him, you might not. Uh, he was in the Trump administration at one point, and then he left, um, and now he's got a radio station where he, you know, he, he spends his time talking about the left and how they've lost their mind and, and this sort of stuff. Um, so basically, uh, there was this altercation between him and a journalist where he got in, he got in the face of a journalist and he called the journalist a punk. And everyone said, "Well, look how undignified it is, and look how these deplorables are all acting, and this is tr this is what Trump encourages." And look, will the attacks on journalists never end? Right. So we're gonna get into all of that tonight. But first, I'll just show you what Jim Acosta did. Jim Acosta, the grandstanding fucking poltroon from fucking CNN who ruins every press conference, who famously had his press credentials removed temporarily for basically assaulting someone um, by, ref you know, that was trying to get the microphone away from him by chopping her arm away and, oh, no, 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 it's my microphone, it's my time, I'm important. Like, absolute fucking clown. Um, the entire media bandied round and basically said, oh, you can't take away Jim Costa's, uh, Jim Costa's press credentials. So the White House didn't take away his press credentials and the story shifted to, oh, Donald Trump actually uh, put out a, uh, the video was doctored. 
scientific analysis it doesn't conclude one way or the other the only reason that it looked a little bit jumpy some people say is because of frame rate differentiation that was according to one expert another expert you know anyway whatever that's ancient history but jim acosta decided to get all on this story because it ties in with the book he's trying to sell right now jim acosta is trying to sell a book called enemy of the people where basically it's him as the hero on the front cover about how it's like it's a dangerous time in america for fucking journalists go cover the cartel in fucking mexico then we'll fucking talk about bravery go go what, what about a journalist that got fucking killed uh, after discovering the fucking panama papers yeah being an anchor on cnn and saying orange man bad orange man bad orange man bad and then eventually like the orange man says you're fake news that's the dangerous time you're talking about if you were covering the fucking cartel you'd be beheaded the end right so don't talk to me about how fucking dangerous it is in america for journalists because it's a fucking lie i'm a member of reporters without borders i saw how many reporters died last year and i saw and i saw how many died in america and it was a record number but that included like two got crushed by a fucking tree in a hurricane for fuck's sake it is not a dangerous time to be a journalist in fucking america stop lying so anyway he jumped on this because obviously it was one of uh, trump's former cabinet Oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> yeah, very good point there, uh, Brahm Sop 45. Uh, meanwhile, these same people who were saying, God, it's such a dangerous, uh, dangerous time to be a journalist. Assange has literally been renditioned away uh, for, for basically WikiLeaks, for embarrassing the political system. Donald Trump, who fucking used those WikiLeaks to leverage public opinion in his favor so he could get elected. A guy who literally talked about WikiLeaks and Julian Assange repeatedly while on the campaign trail, not only denies having ever done that, despite multiple footage of him doing it, he will not be offering him clemency. He will not be off making sure he's looked after. He's a fucking hypocrite, just like all the others by the way so acosta jumped on this and put this fucking tweet out and he said um white house officials invited trump's social media allies to sit in the rose garden but after the event was over west wing aides did nothing when those social media figures began to verbally abuse reporters who were trying to do their jobs this is a good snapshot of how the press is treated by the white house and then this is the video now this guy uh, in shot is a guy called brian Karam. brian Karam uh, works with cnn occasionally but he's a he's a political writer for playboy now that is in itself not what it used to be because <laughs> playboy ain't what it used to be playboy incredibly used to be a place where yeah you would have beautiful women on the pages in various states of undress and occasionally celebrity spreads but you would also have some of the best fucking writers of all time would be published in there thompson miller mailer like you fucking name it you know what i mean tom fucking wolf um, but now it ain't like that, right? And this is the guy who writes about uh, the White House for them, and he's a fucking bum, and he's clearly a ruddy-faced alcoholic, and he's overweight, and he's out of shape. Shout out to uh, Alcoholic Gang, Squad W, <laughs> Drink W. Um, and and he uh, is, is, is a shambles. He's a disgrace to political journalism. journalists, frankly. Right. Um, he's, the past few years... He is, he is somebody who's been turning up to these, like, Trump-supporting rallies and all of this stuff and basically trying to get into fights with people, as you'll see, but whatever. Uh, this is the video that Acosta tweeted out as a matter of fact that, apropos of nothing, Sebastian Gorka and the deplorables attacked this journalist just trying to do his job. I'll get it from the beginning to the end, so you're a punk. You're not a journalist. You're a punk. I, I just want to add, by the way, before anybody sort of makes any grand uh, designs on who I support in this particular thing, uh, I don't consider turning up to uh, the White House wearing an American flag dress um shouting and screaming about how you're the real journalists and uh marga 2020 i don't think that makes you a journalist either frankly but whatever what are you yeah, it's freedom. is yelling at reporters mean freedom 
Does yelling at reporters mean freedom? Thanks yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely it does, yes. Uh, journalists of late b b believe they're completely immune from criticism. You cannot criticize journalism on any level. I, I repeat this. This is, what, this is what the crux of all of my political content really is about. That the media lies to you, and when you criticize them for doing it, they then flip it and say, you're committing a hate crime. Um, it, it's absolutely ridiculous just how insecure the modern media has got, how thin skin they've got, and how malicious and malevolent they are when it comes to abusing their powers and platforms to suppress anybody that questions their version of events. And what we've seen increasingly, it started with the polarization of politics, yeah, right? Like, journalism. where everyone was just openly right. batting for their guys, and objective journalism sort of faded you find the occasional good objective piece in print now you very rarely see good objective journalism on the 24-hour news networks but you know you know implicitly and you understand nothing can prepare you for the depths and depravity of how far the modern media will, will, will go to sway your opinion and to actually find facts and get truth now is harder than it's ever been yet we exist in a time when information is more readily available when news is being beamed out and it's just garbage it's just nonsense so when you hear a journalist say is shouting at a journalist freedom and in their mind they they believe it isn't that's where we're at right now that is where we're at. And this is Fox journalists, this is CNN journalists, this is all journalists. They believe there is something inherently wrong with criticizing right. them, shouting at them, right. telling them you don't approve of their behavior. When, of course, if you're not doing anything threatening, if you're not, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's First Amendment stuff. Journalists are now anti First Amendment. We're getting to that point. You know, these are the people who say, well, Assange wasn't really a journalist, and the First Amendment doesn't cover taking the presidency away from glorious Hillary Clinton. It's like, it does. Why, why, why do you want to surrender this? It's the thing that protects you. It's the thing that enables you to do your job. Anyway, so Jim Acosta basically sent out what I guess the modern media would call a doctored video, because it was very selectively edited to leave out the fact that the journalist had been heckling the people there saying ridiculous things talking about demonic possession like some fucking knockoff alex jones character and then offered sebastian gorka to have a fight he said let's step outside which again it doesn't matter how you dress it up linguistically we all know what that means we all know let's step outside means let's get away from the forum and the function where no one can see us and let's have a fucking dust up and settle it and no one gets arrested so check this out this is what Jim Acosta deliberately fucking left out when he tweeted this video out. And, it, and it's unconscionable. It's unforgivable because the real video was out before this edited version. He waited to b boost up the lie. Sebastian Gorka trended, hashtag, and about 50% of it was people posting the accurate video. And the other 50% was saying Sebastian Gorka is a piece of shit and so undignified and this is what Trump administration's about. It's like the game is fucking garbage now. But here it is. This is the actual uh, video. Right? And you'll hear right at the start, Brian Karam, the, the journalist, start a f trying to start a fight with Sebastian Gorka. Listen carefully. Don't be sad. Don't be sad. No, I'm just standing around. This is a group of people that are eager for demonic possession. <laughs> Hey, come on over here and talk to me, brother. We can go outside and have a long conversation. You are a punk. You're not a journalist. You're a punk. Go home. Go home. Hey, Gorka, get a job. Hey, just for the record, he'd kick your punk ass. <laughs> Right, so that video puts a slightly different complexion on things, doesn't it? He's, like, clearly, I mean, like, if anybody thinks this guy hasn't been on... I mean, don't get me wrong, look. Trade secret. All journalists in all fields are, are functional alcoholics. It, it, you have to be. Um, but the, the, the idea that, um, that, he, that we're just going to completely ignore the reality that this guy swaying with his eyes closed behind a cordon with other journalists is just shouting abuse at guests at the white house 
talking about demonic possession, offering to fight them. We have to leave that out. We have to draw ranks. We have to close ranks because journalists cannot be criticized anymore. Journalists cannot be criticized anymore. They, they are immune to it. So nobody on the mainstream press is going to call out a fellow political journalist right now. They're just not going to do it. Anybody who thinks that behavior is uh, dignified for, for a journalist, um, especially a journalist attending at the, the White House, and, and supposedly covering this event but in, you know I, I don't know what to tell you it, it, it's again it's the kind of thing it just shows how far general standards have fallen in the press that this isn't even con like, 20 years ago this guy would just never be allowed back in the white house and no one would bat an eyelid about it so anyway um so i wanted to bring that up because um i think it's very interesting that we're in this situation now where journalists are just fucking out of control with what is a story and in particular social media they fucking hate it like they did there, there was this non-stop coverage of this trump social media summit uh there was this non-stop coverage where they were just like super fucking butthurt about it and and there was this right so i'll just play you this clip from msnbc uh the trump social Bring media the white house and say you know you can do some outrageous stuff and you're still you're still allowed here is there a way are, are, do some of these people who are coming today might there be more harmless ways to get out there and use the internet any in, in order to sort of boost the president we have a uh, daily yeah. beast for example talks about um so li listen to that what she's saying is are there are there more harmless ways uh, out there uh, to boost the president harmless ways harmless as if the people who are in attendance there are doing anything inherently harmful a turning point executive benny johnson in an instagram post promised to use today's event to give the president dank meme ideas my dude speaking of memes the president also retweeted a video that suggests he will be president forever right you have these memes talk about the power of that and sort of what it means moving forward yeah th they understand that this is you can see that video right there it says you know trump until 2048 total there. troll right no you're not see it like it's a it's of meant course. to inc incite people on the left to be like what is he doing right and that's not the insidious stuff this is this is the stuff that that you probably want if you're if you're the left this is normal anyway so they did they did this non-stop fucking follow-up coverage about memes and social media and how everybody who attended was like some secret fucking nazi operative and just gibberish you know um but anyway the 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 the, the media for some they've lost their fucking shit dude and i have to frame this historically uh because there have been a number of fucking stories that have come out recently and there is a guy on this uh, that you saw there with that time meme uh he's called carpe donctum he was invited to the white house because he's made so many memes that donald trump has tweeted out but that meme that we saw there the the uh, b uh president trump tweeting out you know trump forever keep in mind this is a man in his 70s uh best will in the world even if he did decide to throw up a dictatorial regime how much longer is he really going to be in power probably not long but but anyway it's certainly not to 2400 or wherever the video stops at but the media lost their shit i'll show you that in a second but first i have to take you back in time i have to take you back in time to when cnn basically fucking tracked down and doxed a reddit user for making a gif which showed donald trump uh for it, when he had his spell in the wwe um which showed donald trump basically beating uh, i think it was vince mcmahon uh but instead of vince mcmahon's face it was the cnn logo and cnn decided this was an incitement of violence towards journalists and then Andrew Kaczynski, who does their um, specialist uh, tech segment called K-File, you can shut up, basically was so proud of how they did it. They said, how CNN found the Reddit user behind the Trump wrestling gift. And they talked about it and broke it down. He was a Reddit user called Han Asshole Solo. Uh, actually, appropriate, because it was uh, Harrison Ford's birthday yesterday. 77, going strong. Um but reddit user han asshole solo first shared the gif on wednesday of trump pummeling a wrestler with the cnn logo imposed on his face cnn could no longer find an, an instance of the gif the gif was later edited into a video with sound and tweeted by the president on sunday so they actually tracked this guy down um 
And then they made the guy apologize. And they basically said, we will not release the guy's details because he has promised to not do it again. So they made him do a public apology and that apology was the, on the proviso, he doesn't make any more gifts, he doesn't hurt CNN's feelings, and this private citizen, we will hold this information over you, and we will not release it because you've apologized. That is not what the press should be doing. But this was a while ago, and people forget, this was in 2017, right? And... K, the, the Andrew um, K file, we'll just call him that, right? Andrew Kaczynski, he basically said this is a complete misrepresentation of the story. It's not. It's actually in the article they wrote. It's actually in the article they wrote, where it literally says, um, uh, I'm going to read you the exact quote. Where was the bit they fucking said it? Here it is. So, CNN is not publishing Hanan Solo's name because he is a private citizen, who you fucking tracked down, who has issued an extensive statement of apology. Right there you say we are not publishing his name because he has issued an extensive statement of apology. Showed his remorse by saying he has taken down all his offending posts and because he said he is not going to repeat this ugly behavior on social media again. In addition, he said his statement could serve as an example to others to not do the same. CNN reserves the right to publish his identity should any of that change. That is the exact quote. And yet they have tried to fucking deny repeatedly that they blackmailed this guy, right? After tracking him down because he made fun of them in a GIF. It's there. It's in black and white. And now a lot, I, I see you in the chat there, Zarkam98, Zark and you're saying that it was this guy was underage. I, that was a lie that was spread. I don't think that's true. He wasn't underage. Yeah, he was definitely an adult. Um, I think that was just something that went around. But the idea that you, this is, this is one of the biggest operate, this is one of the biggest media outlets in the world. And you go to a citizen, haha, tracked you down, we know you are, we've used our resources to basically find out where you are, your anonymity means nothing to us, we will publish your name and address at a time when Trump supporters are being attacked, and we, will, and we are using that tacit threat to get you to apologize, and you've got absolutely no reason to apologize for, because you cannot mock us, because we're CNN, you cannot mock the press, you cannot mock us especially, and if you ever decide to mock us again, we'll, we will release your name. It's there, it's their own words. They've tried to walk it back ever since, but it's their own words, right? So, they didn't just stop there, CNN. They've done some of the most outrageous and egregious shit I've ever seen when it comes to violating private citizens' rights. There was this old woman, right, who was in a fucking a um, Facebook group. That's right. Right? And back at the time... Looking forward to 20 more. Excellent. Rimworld's coming back, baby. Tell your friends. Um, we... So... They've pushed this Russian shit, which, by the way, private video shows multiple CNN staff members saying, actually, the, we, we, we don't really buy the Russian collusion stuff. Um, and lo and behold, there is no criminal conspiracy between Russia and Trump. None. Two and a half years, whatever it is, millions of dollars wasted, unprecedented un, uh, levels of access for the Mueller investigation found nothing that ties the two but at cnn absolutely was so fucking jacked up on the idea of proving russia had interfered with an election they found an elderly female trump supporter who was a member of a facebook page that turned out to have been funded and set up by those russian operatives now you see they seem to think 
Nah, the 20,000 Twitter posts and the, like, $20,000 spent on Facebook pages uh, was enough to fucking subvert an American election. So, they tracked down this old lady, which obviously easy to do because it was on Facebook, so you sign up with your fucking full name and all your details and your picture. And they went to her house and confronted her and said... She had been manipulated by the Russians, and she was like, <laughs> she was part of a Russian coordinated event and was influenced by the Kremlin. They just turned up to her house. Like, just this old lady. Look how she's living, by the way, in like a fucking, probably is a one, two room fucking bungalow. Like, this isn't a wealthy person. This is exactly Trump's base, by the way. Right? And this is journalism. Watch this shit. It's shameless. What part of it in this is a cover-up? What? Are you well, saying that's they, not true or what? Uh, the Russians? I don't care if they were... Look at that. Her full name unwittingly promoted Russian coordinated event. She was a member of a Facebook page and she copied posts and, and told other people about them. That's what she did. Unwittingly promoted a russian coordinated event make her sound like a fucking super spy so again we can't have that we can't have people on social media you know probably posting bad things about cnn uh involved or not, in between that, that to me is the least important thing but they were involved with you did you guys know russia was involved with you the Russian, the, the, the Russian, supposedly the Russian government, the Russian agents were involved with you because of that Facebook post. Have you ever seen anything like this? Have you ever seen anything like this? And again, no outrage at the time, just the usual fucking voices talking about it. And then they immediately move on to the next thing. S the way CNN behaved that year, the, the, when they were still in the height of Trump denial and impeachment fever was unbelievable the way they treated private citizens it was unbelievable not befitting a news entity of their size and stature know that? they weren't involved with us Let's, you know just make sure that you report it correctly that you know but you guys were involved with being patriotic right very very patriotic but not being patriotic was the group that contacted and helped organize some of these activities that you posted on your own facebook account Th those were legitimate those were russians they were not Russians. I don't go with the Russians. That on, group was a... Russian. I have nothing to do with the Russians. The well, groups, apparently you the... did. No. Maybe you didn't know it, but oh, you please. did. When you're talking like this, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Well, I'm talking with those what's people based on that the... were with me were all Trump supporters, very, very much so. And okay? all apparently following the direction of groups that were associated with russians who were BS. actually infiltrated BS. bs and please please report that i don't believe that that's bullshit i know all the people that were with me okay they were at my meetings they're all trump supporters okay mm -hmm. but did you realize that you guys were in communication electronically <laughs> with with russians i can't i, can. I, don't I can't even believe it's real Hillary, Hillary i cannot believe this is real it's so like a parody her, it's uh, bandits some of the Mueller? stuff that you, you were in charge of the Facebook account, right? You were posting and reposting almost word for word the information that was coming out of this <laughs> internet research agency no. in St. Petersburg. No. You don't believe that? No. Nope. It's bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> she says she never communicated with any Russians and says no one at any of their protests were anything but Americans for Trump. Well, there you go. Yep, there you go. You harassed an elderly woman on her front lawn because she was a member of a Facebook page that you had learned maybe had some Russian money go to it and promoted Trump. Wow. Fuck me. I'm amazed that you're not there with, uh, you know, armed police or the Stasi or something like that. CNN, ladies and gentlemen. That's what passes for fucking journalism these days. So anyway... It doesn't end with CNN. It's not just fucking CNN. Uh, there was a video, right? Nancy Pelosi. 
Uh, there was a video that was circulating around. Um, what somebody had done, they took a video of Nancy Pelosi, and um, she was giving a speech, and she was a little bit, uh, you could tell it was off the cuff, so it was a little bit kind of unpolished, let's say. And they fucking, they, they slowed it down. So somebody somewhere slowed the video down, and then a guy came along, and, uh, well, the guy had posted the original video, actually, but then a group came along and slowed the video down and said, hey, is Nancy Pelosi drunk? Watch this video. And they slowed it down slightly. So she was talking like this, right? So, obviously, to, to the trained ear, it was clearly slowed down anyway. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Right? Well... I'll tell you who gives a fuck. The Daily Fucking Beast. The Daily Beast went, and this video was discussed on national news. It was a slowed down video of Nancy Pelosi talking, and a small fucking political thing and took the video and said, hey, is she drunk? And because it, and, and it had got traction and a lot of views, the entire media cycle had to counter it. Can't have Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, can't have her being criticized. Can't have her fucking criticized. She she hates the orange man. So she is above. So the Daily Beast, right, had Kevin Paulson um, basically go out and fucking dox the guy they thought made the video. Um... Wait there, because I need to get, I need to tell you a little bit about this guy. Um, right. So, this guy Kevin Paulson went out and ran this story about this guy uh, that that supposedly was behind the viral drunk Pelosi uh, video. And you, and here's what they found. The video that racked up millions of views and sparked a national conversation was uploaded by a sports blogger from the Bronx, currently on probation for domestic battery. That's what they ran with, right? I mean, that was like how they framed it. Here's the reality. It was a guy called Sean Brooks, a black Trump supporter who was working uh, basically a part-time construction job to make ends meet. And he was a big Trump supporter and he would occasionally tweet things, um, uh, you know, Put, put like uh, that was related to politics so just listen on may 22nd a donald trump superfan an occasional sports blogger from the bronx named sean brooks posted a video clip of nancy pelosi on his personal facebook page the clip showed pelosi at her most excitable stammering during a press conference as she voiced frustration over an abortive infrastructure meeting with the president brooks commentary on the video was succinct is pelosi drunk 13 minutes later, a Facebook official told the Daily Beast that Brooks posted a very different Pelosi video to a Facebook page called Politics Watchdog, one of a series of hyper-partisan news operations Brooks runs with help, he claims. This clip had been altered to slow Pelosi down without lowering the pitch of her voice. The effect was to make it sound as though the Speaker of the House was slurring her words drunkenly while criticizing Donald Trump. 15 minutes after that, the same doctored video appeared on a second Facebook page Brooks manages, All News 24-7. This clip was identical to the Politics Watchdog video in every way, except it didn't carry the Politics Watchdog branding that was superimposed over the earlier video. Whoever had posted it had access to the director's cut. On both pages, the clip was accompanied by the exact same dispassionate newsy prose. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on President Trump walking out infrastructure meeting, it was very, very strange. So, to be clear, this guy's crime is that allegedly he took a video of Nazi Pelosi, the original one, slowed it down, and put it on a, a popular political Facebook page. That's it. That's, that's, that's why an investigative journalist dug up into all his shit, his criminal record, and ran with with something completely unrelated that he was on probation for domestic battery obviously don't hit your partners right 
but what what's that got to do with the story even what's that got to do with the fucking story why do i need to know that this guy has a criminal record why do i need to know he's on probation why why do why do i is you, you, apparently this is in the public interest i understand saying hey guys the video was doctored i don't understand here's the guy who made the video i don't think that's important honestly and then oh and by the way the guy who made the video has a criminal record I, seriously you've gone so far beyond the journalism. remit at that point that's right it's beyond a joke i will continue to support your content trips. thank you your money i hate that everyone else is obnoxious yes they are thank you two months you're on you're on the road to my i, I need my own color pill because it's not black pill and it's not red pill and it's not blue pill and it's not bread pill you're not even a real journalism that's right. you've been rich pilled um so anyway uh you know th this article goes on and on and on um they in oh here's the other fucking bit this is outrageous so they interviewed his ex-girlfriend um they they, they interviewed his ex-girlfriend and then just published what she said completely uh whole cloth without like any sort of scrutiny or whatever you can see the quote there He's deeply into politics. He has this thing with being a secret agent and working for the government. So now they're trying to make him sound like he's got schizophrenia or something. So again, can anybody tell me why... Right, okay. You've doxxed the man. You've told me that he's made the video. You've told me he's got a criminal record. Why are we now interviewing his ex? Well, what has that got to do with anything? What, why do I need to know what his ex-girlfriend thinks of a guy whose name I shouldn't even know? Why? Um, it, it's insane. Uh, so anyway, the, the, this article is like this thorough like takedown piece of him. And the message is clear, by the way. The message is clear. If you do not understand what's really going on here, I'll spell it out to you. You absolutely cannot... One, publish anything critical or vaguely fake or misleading about Democrats. Meanwhile, fuck, man. It's open season on Republicans, too. Have you seen the nominations for the Esports Awards Breakthrough Esports Game of the Year? I haven't. It's a good laugh. Hmm. I'll give it a look. The, the, the second. In fact, why am I saying I haven't? I, I, I got sent the email. I haven't actually checked that column. I just wait until they're tweeted out publicly. So have they been tweeted out publicly? I don't know. Anyway, whatever. So, um, the other thing, of course, is that the, the media will come after you. We're in cahoots. If you ever, ever, ever show blind allegiance to fucking Donald Trump and then have a platform, we're going to get you. We're going to fucking get you. And it doesn't matter if you're a private citizen. We'll get you and we'll put all your fucking dirt out there in public. We'll tell everyone about that domestic abuse charge. We'll fucking tell every And, and, and what's his crime? What, what has he done to deserve this? He made a fucking video and allegedly slowed down. I keep saying allegedly because he fucking denies he did that. He's currently in a lawsuit with these motherfuckers. Well, anyway, people didn't like it. People didn't like it. People didn't like that the Daily Beast went and did this and took a private citizen, laid all of his skeletons, you know, public and everything else. Um... So, who better to run, uh, fucking, you know, and uh, the, the the offensive, and c c lay down some covering fire for the Daily Beast, CNN, of course, because they've been out there fucking straight doxing people, making fucking gifs and memes too, right? So look, Daily Beast identifies man behind viral anti plus video. Why is this news? Ultra Michigan is, uh, I think, like no other. Everyone here is supportive. Everyone wants to help you. Everyone wants to succeed. And so it's not about me. It's about us. Well, watch this ad and, and then we can listen here. to Brian Stelter, a man supposedly four years younger than me, I think. 
unlike ask questions of right the here, editor of the Daily Beast. For us, access to capital, local investors, people who had been successful in the past yes. and wanted to help a young entrepreneur get started, yes, was really what jump started our business. Nice, pure Michigan, big fan. Let, let's turn to your scoop uh, this weekend, Noah. The Daily Beast. Your scoop. On the, uh, right, a scoop is where. You find out something that's super important that nobody else has access to. Now, this is stretching that mighty fucking thin. But okay, good scoop, homie. It seems the creator of that Nancy Pelosi dumb fake video. This was the one that made her appear to be drunk, slurring her words. It's got a lot of attention a week ago. So you all try to figure out who created it. Right. I mean, look, this is a video that was a hoax that reached up to the highest, highest levels of power, which... Right, and again, immediately, immediately they will fucking gaslight you. Immediately they will gaslight you. This wasn't a video of, of Nancy Pelosi slowed down with some going on. <laughs> she sounds pissed. <laughs> Do you remember when he used to be able to mock public figures without the media running fucking, you know, running defense for them? Do you remember that? Do you remember when, it, like, mockery came with the territory and it was completely fair fucking game and you wouldn't have huge, powerful media entities trying to fucking take you down? Do you remember when that was a thing? Do you remember that? Yeah? So, this was a hoax that went to the highest levels of power. What do you mean? What do you mean? Did, did like, Don Trump Jr. fucking retweet it or something? Is that it? Is that what we're talking about? Rudy Giuliani himself uh, pushing it out. Rudy, it was Rudy Giuliani. The highest levels of power. Senile fucking Rudy Giuliani. Who doesn't even fucking know where he is half the fucking time. Talks utter fucking garbage. Tweeted it out. Right? And so there's a lot of highest levels of power might or might not be behind this. And so Kevin Paulson was able to track down the kind of network of fake news sites that were pushing this. And then the person that first uploaded the video. And what we learned from the story is that there's a profit motive here uh, that you can put up a lot of these videos on Facebook. You can make a quick buck. Didn't this guy say he made a thousand dollars? Yeah, I mean, but look, that's not it, it might have been. A lot right. So now, now, now li listen to this. So the guy said. Because the video went viral, he made $1,000. $1,000 is nothing. $1,000 is nothing to media types. That's their cocktail bill, right? This is a part-time construction worker. A black part-time construction worker, by the way. So we're always hearing about how there's this disparity of wealth in America. How could you in good conscience, right? If you claim to be liberal... And, and you have progressive values. How could you in good conscience, because this guy tried to make a bit of dollars on this, uh, like some extra money on the side with, with some fucking political videos and like trying to and running a Facebook page, you went after him and not only fucking shut it down, you got him fucking basically publicly ridiculed, fired from his fucking job. You, you know, because uh, I don't think he could go back to the construction company after this because they didn't want to pick him up for any more hours because it was considered too hot. How can, in, how can you, in good conscience, call yourself the good guy at that point? Like, does the penny not ever fucking drop with these people? Like, do you not realize what you've done? The monumental damage you have done to this person's life. And then he has the audacity to say... Well, now, $1,000 might be a lot of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. With your fucking big fucking apartment in New fucking York or wherever the fuck you live. Looking down on some guy in the fucking Bronx trying to earn a crust. But he did insult a Democrat. How fucking day. The, the, the sanctimonious purity of it. And I'm going to show you why that's massive hypocrisy, by the way. How they led front and center with his criminal record. That's not... It might have been a lot of money to him, but I don't think it was a pure profit motive. I think for him, it was a matter of ideology. It was, you know, he's a big Trump supporter. And, you know, one of the most interesting things about this story to me was that, you know, you don't need some sophisticated operation in order to publish fake news or publish. <laughs> no, you could be fucking CNN. Of hoax that'll grab uh, the country's attention. It doesn't I, take a Russian bot farm. It's just one person with video editing software tricking people. Yeah, exactly. And I thought that was the real key to the story. And, and the reason and it was the so people saying that you shouldn't have named him because he's a private citizen. I'm seeing a lot of people on Twitter saying you all were irresponsible for outing him. Yeah. I, now look, this is where the apology, the, the, right? It's it, it, it's an apology for doing something that is unconscionable. That again, journalists have no part, part doing. 
I'll, I'll give you a little bit of history, a little bit of context. I remember when, um, you know, Gorka was kind of really getting into the dark times. And I think I've told this anecdote a few times, but there was a Reddit mod called Violent Acres, and he ran some of the most disagreeable subreddits. Like, he ran the Jailbait subreddit and stuff like this, where it was literally people posting pictures of young girls in bikinis and shit, right? So it's fucking gross, pedophilic content. Um, but Reddit had a very open policy about what could and couldn't exist on its platform so gorka went out and fucking doxed the mod found out who he was because he ran racist subreddits he ran pedophilic subreddits i think he ran uh, the creep shots subreddit again if you're old school like me you'll remember all of these awful subreddits that used to exist uh it's just not like that now it's like you know um You've got the Donald, and that won't last much longer, by the way. That's gone. Clip this. The Donald will be removed from Reddit before 2020. 100%. It's got to go. So, <clears throat> you, 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 but he, 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 he the creep shots uh, subreddit was even fucking worse. It was literally men taking unsolicited pictures of women without their knowledge and then uploading them, and everyone would talk about how attractive they were. It was the incels fucking dream you know so it was all grotesque so gorka went and tracked down this mod and uh outed him and because of it he lost his job he quit all the subreddits closed it all down gave up his moderator ship i think he even deleted his account uh it basically ruined this guy's life now i've never been sympathetic about that i probably should be a bit more sympathetic but because of my own personal biases it's very hard for me to remove myself and go he didn't deserve it he probably didn't deserve that um but the subreddits he was running were, were disgusting and caused untold um dismay to to the people that were affected by them um anyway reddit was so pissed off with what gawker had done because they outed a, the name of a reddit moderator gawker was banned for fucking ages from all of their articles now that was just one stepping stone once that story blew up and became considered like a great piece of journalism the line really started to blur and then you ended up like with gorka like outing gay preachers you know like they they found um a southern preachers uh he was a christian pastor in texas or something like one of those fucking you know tiny little towns in the south and because he was always banging on about how he fucking um hated gays and it was against god and it was an abomination and they found his grinder account published it ruined his life uh, you know even with that there's maybe a line You're not where you go ah but he is a, he's a pastor so he's misrepresenting somebody maybe he deserves it then they started doing it to just regular businessmen, regular businessmen who had gay flings. And they were interviewing gay guys and finding grinder accounts and doing all this stuff. And then it just got to the stage where even when a judge told them, you mustn't publish Hulk Hogan's sex tape, you absolutely must not do that. It has no merit. It's not in the public interest. And we are putting an injunction on you doing it. They laughed and said, fuck you. We're going to do it anyway. They wrote an op-ed saying we're going to publish it. And they got fucking sued into oblivion. And that's a good thing. Even say, speaking as a journalist, that's a good thing. Because their hubris, each little step along the way, they were using their media arm to just disrupt citizens' lives. And it had no public interest, no public value. This is on that level. This, this is absolutely on that level. And here we are on CNN, and, they're, and, and we're going to throw away some dismissive reason why it's okay to do it. I don't think that's accurate. First of all, I think he outed himself, uh, you know, by attaching his name to several fake news sites that then pushed the video. Okay. And then he, he outed himself by attaching his name to several sites that published the video. That's a pretty interesting fucking standard. That's basically saying because we can track down who someone is, we can out them in the public domain, no matter the circumstances. That's pretty fucking broad, in my opinion. He spoke to our reporter at length and on the record for an hour and a half, and then we also withheld some information that he didn't that he didn't want uh, out there that um, he felt would uh, uh, impinge his privacy. So I, 
And incredibly, they even say, hey, we did him a favor because we, we held back some information. We just published his criminal record, interviewed his ex-girlfriend, <laughs> uh, published his full God-given name and where he lives. Uh, but, but hey, don't worry. But we didn't publish some other stuff. So we're the good guys. We're actually the good guys here. I, I uh, am glad that these people want to protect the privacy of this man. Uh, but I think uh, our actions in this case were, uh, were right on the money. It does feel that dumb fakes are everywhere these days. Yeah. Well, you know, dumb fakes, because we've got to invent a term a, for a you idiots at home to explain why it's bad, and, and then we can have rolling news about the dumb fakes. Fake quote from Trump. You look at the tweet, it could have looked like a real comment the president said. He says he meant it in jest, but the president criticized him for it. The problem, I think, with a tweet like this is it's a respected person on Twitter. So this is this is their little crumb. This is their little offering of yeah, we we should have some standards too in the media. They throw this fucking journalist under the bus who basically tweeted something out, basically falsely quoted the president, and they go yeah, I think the problem with this is that you know you're a respected person, so it's kind of bad. It's kind of bad to like misrepresent what people say when you when you're a journalist. It's kind of bad, but you know it's not as bad as dumb fakes. So. <laughs> let's um let, let's just show you as well how fucking wild uh the story gets because if you understand the, the the hypocrisy of what they did by laying this guy's uh criminal record bare and sort of implying you know the guy who wrote the article kevin polson really sort of like in several lines drove it forward oh he's been battery he battered his girlfriend he's on probation for it and blah 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 yeah there's none of the context there there's no explanation to it there's no um you know this, the details about the severity of it or lack thereof just this constant regurgitation of this let me tell you about kevin paulson right kevin paulson has a criminal record he has a criminal record right he used to be a hacker he's broken the law Right? Here it is. It's black hat hacking. On June 1st, 1990, he took over all the telephone lines for Los Angeles radio station Kiss FM, guaranteeing he would be the 102nd caller so he could win a Porsche. So this is fraud as well as hacking. Right? When the FBI started pursuing Paulson, he went underground as a fugitive. A storage company cleared out a storage shed in Paulson's name due to non-payment of rent, where computer equipment was discovered, which was furnished to the FBI for evidence. When he was featured on NBC's Unsolved Mysteries, the show's 1-800 telephone lines mysteriously crashed. Paulson was arrested in April 1991. Awaiting trial in June 1994, Paulson pleaded guilty to seven counts of conspiracy, fraud, and wiretapping. He was sentenced to five years in a federal penitentiary, as well as banned as using com uh, from using computers or the internet for three years after his release. He was the first American to be released from prison with a court sentence that banned him from using computers and the internet after a prison sentence. So... Imagine the fucking nerve you have to have, right? He didn't do this when he was a kid. He's 53. Wasn't like 12-year-old hijinks. So imagine the fucking towering levels of hubris again. The absolute inability to... Well, you know, I... I have earned my second chance, said the cunt. I have earned my second chance, but this guy here, he's done a slowed down Pelosi video. He's fair fucking game, even though he's a private citizen. So, fuck him and his past. Let's get all his skeletons out in the closet. The disconnect. The disconnect. And what it is, is I'm a journalist. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. And I am immune to criticism. And you are bad. And if you do anything I don't like, I will ruin your life. That is how they think. That is the standard media playbook now that you are given. 
we're a fraternity, we're untouchable. Our political allies, they're untouchable. And we go all out to defend them and lie and do everything we can to keep them at the reins of power. And everyone else, get fucked. We're journalists. That is literally where we're at. It's not even a fucking discussion. The nerve of it. And it didn't just um, kind of go past, like, um, there, you know? Like, other publications picked up on it. Um, you had... Uh, let me let me find you... Uh, well, put it this way. The Columbia Journalism Review said they had concerns you know, about it, journalism. right? They couldn't commit because, again, That's they're right. in the clique. They're in the Love clan. So you... Content while on my commute to work. No worries, Dom. Have a good day. Smile. Mm. Nearly 12 months as well. Congrats. I'm getting in with the old boys club. <clears throat> so the Columbia Journalism Review wrote an article called Should the Daily Beast have exposed the man behind the drunk Pelosi video? And uh, basically, it goes kind of back and forth, saying, you know, Glenn Greenwald from The Intercept. You know, listen, I don't agree with everything he said. He definitely had a case of fucking orange man bad fever during the elections. But I'll, I'll, I'll add this. He is actually being persecuted by a, 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 a government because he lives in Brazil. Um, and he knows about that. He's having all his records overturned, all his financials overturned. They're trying to pin something on him. He's He's got every risk of being the next Assange. So he knows a fucking thing or two about it. And he very often comes out on the right side of these debates about journalist, journalistic ethics. And this was no difference. He goes, I can't believe, honestly, that journalists don't see why it's so repellent to unleash the resources of a major news outlet on, on an obscure, anonymous, powerless, quasi-unemployed citizen for the crime of trivially mocking the most powerful political leaders. And that is just the, that is the most succinct, fair summary of what was going on. Um, but anyway, it, it sort of summarizes the criticism and the support it got. And then it goes, uh, it goes here. I'll, I'll read you the last uh, two paragraphs. Um, <clears throat> it's also not strictly correct to accuse the Daily Beast of doxing Brooks, since that term usually refers to publishing someone's contact information, such as home or work phone numbers, addresses. Shackman also pointed out that Brooks put his name on the sites that he published and or was an admin of, and he'd already identified himself on Twitter as an administrator of one of the Facebook pages before the Daily Beast article was published. Brooks, for his part, started a GoFundMe page to raise money, raise money for what he says is a potential lawsuit against the website for publishing an inaccurate trash article. He says he didn't cre create the Pelosi video, but just uploaded it like anyone else, and argues that there are other errors in the story, including the way it describes his battery charge. A number of observers, including Binkowski, pointed out another potentially disturbing accent uh, aspect to the Daily Beast story about Brooks. Namely, it suggests Facebook verified Brooks' identity. This is where we really fucking go nuts, guys. Because the Daily Beast, despite them saying it was so easy to track him down, and he'd outed himself. You heard Shackman there on CNN. He'd outed himself. Wrong. Bullshit. They had to get Facebook to privately confirm his identity. That's right. Facebook, who've just been signed $5 billion for privacy violations by the FTC, they, doc they worked with the Daily Beast and gave him name, details, everything. Facebook did it. Um... It says here, Facebook verified Brooks' identity, even confirming the exact time he uploaded two versions of the clip. A Facebook official said the video was first posted on Politics Watchdog directly from Brooks' personal Facebook account. Binkowski tells the Columbia Journalism Review, she thinks it's worth commenting on how readily Facebook apparently gave up his identity, and yet they won't reveal so many other things uh, that seem even more important when it comes to disinformation. So don't worry about it. Not only, not only are these social media platforms, which apparently shouldn't be regulated because they're private businesses, man, will just give you up at the fucking drop of a hat every time a journalist comes around in what must be a violation of their terms of service and commitment to protecting your private information. Now nah, they'll just work with a Daily Beast. But here's where it gets worse. How the fuck do you think the Daily Beast know who to call? 
and know exactly who can get them that information. Social media, media, political arm of a certain party. It's not a myth. It is not paranoia. It's not conspiracy. To even know, right, the most thorough journalist, to even know who to fucking call to basically get you. So, uh, yeah, you work in uh, that thing, so you can just get me that guy's name. Yeah, no problem. Beep. And have it out, like, a day after the video's out or whatever the fuck. It is terrifying. And they're all, they're all at it. They are all at it, guys. It's real. So, yeah, the, he's he's putting in a, a lawsuit, which uh, isn't going particularly well, but he did also say he denies having made the video. There is a statement on uh, Facebook he, he put out. I don't know why he's still using Facebook. But he says, uh, as, many, as many will see, that an article of me has been posted online by a left-leaning site called The Daily Beast. I'm being accused of creating the Pelosi video that went viral. I'm one of the admins of the page, but I did not create the video, nor did I post it to the Politics Watchdog page. They need a fall guy, and they chose me because of my background. Yes, I made some mistakes in my life, but the details in that article about my past doesn't explain the full picture, and it can appear to look like I'm just some bad guy. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The Daily Beast threw me under the bus. Details in that article are not 100% accurate. So now he's got to try and get the money together. Spoiler, he'll never have enough money to run a successful uh, uh, libel defamation case against um, against the Daily Beast. He's just now going to live with the shit show that is his life. Plus point, he probably did get some extra Twitter followers. Hip, hip, hooray. Okay, what else goes on in relation to memes? Well, do you remember when Joe Biden, there was a meme about Joe Biden? Do you remember? Do you remember Joe Biden? Okay, so Donald Trump tweeted out a meme, right? We all know Joe Biden's creepy as fuck. We all know that, right? Joe Biden is a fucking creep. He can't help himself, even though he's got a team of advisors who say to him, look, Uncle Joe, man, you're fucking 75 or whatever. You know, just stop touching them kids. Stop kissing them kids. Stop coming up behind people and giving them a shoulder rub in public. Stop. Just fucking stop with that. That's all he has to do, by the way, to, like, make his, you know, image, his chances of winning go up significantly. Spoiler, he doesn't win. Um... You know, it's it's ridiculous. So somebody made a meme of Biden coming up behind himself and creeping on himself. Right? I'll see if I can just show you the meme unadulterated. So somebody made this meme. See if you can spot, right, what's wrong with, with what's happening in this video. I shake hands. I hug people. I, I grab men and women by the shoulders and say, you can do this. And and uh, whether they're women, men, young, old, it's, it's the way I've always been. It's the way I've tried to show I care about them and I'm listening. Right. So, um, it's pretty fucking funny, right? Like, it's funny if you know anything about, how, you know, creepy Uncle Joe. Uh, and, uh, you know, Donald Trump is a fucking troll uh, he's lots of things he's a fucking troll so he, he tweeted it out he retweeted that um and the media lost their shit because again people are making media that very quickly conveys a point about a democrat that they would rather you didn't think about and that is that the guy is a fucking creep and a lot of people still think Biden's going to be the number one fucking guy to run against Trump. Spoiler, if, if, if that happens, it's really bad if you're a Democrat. Like, it cannot be him. It can't be him and it can't be Bernie. Sorry, guys. They just cannot win. Um, so, uh, anyway, they fucking went crazy, the media. So what they decided had happened now was that Donald Trump had tweeted out a doctored video. Now, I'm just going to give you the definition, the dictionary definition of the word doctored, right? It is, uh, it, it's crazy to me that they even decided to use this. They said, uh, right, so it says, doctored means that you change the content or appearance of a document, picture, or video in order to deceive someone. Well, how can you deceive me He's not Dr. Manhattan, he's Joe fucking Biden! 
How can he get behind himself and hug himself? It's not doctored. There's no risk of deception here. So it, they caught everyone called this doctor. The media went mental because you have to imply that d there's something worse going on than there actually is going on. Donald Trump posts doctored video. This is the New York Times. Get bombarded with that. Trump tweets doctored video mocking Joe Biden. See, doctored sounds sinister. Doctored sounds like he's lying. Doctored sounds like he's controlling information, doesn't it, right? Sounds worse. Sounds like he's, you know, just another lie from all big Don, right? But it's not. It's just a fucking meme video. Newsweek, Donald Trump Jr. shared Alexis. doctored video of Dear Joe Alexis, Biden touching himself. Very, very that sounds absolutely I awful. You don't know who wrote, write, write your headlines at Newsweek, but fuck me, it's pretty bad. Daily Beast, of course, Trump tweets doctored video mocking Joe Biden touching complaint. USA Today. Mocking Biden, Trump tweets bizarre doctored video appearing to show former VP sniffing his own hair. Right? <laughs> Brilliant. We'll have, we'll have a Yahoo ad. Fucking, they still real. Right? New York Magazine, they went fucking gangster on it. They just fucking sprayed a Tommy gun into the room. Let's fuck everyone over. Trump tweets doctored video of Joe Biden fondling himself. I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you? But it's doctored, right? It's doctored. We just saw at the start of this topic, <laughs> Jim Acosta posted a video that was manipulated to make you think another way. No, they would not dream of saying he posted, retweeted a doctored video. They would not dream because they are the arbiters of truth. The media never lies, guys. The media never tells you when he lies. It doesn't manipulate what you think, what you feel. It, it, they don't use language that's coded doctored is it, it's a trick it's like a magic spell it's like hypnosis you hear doctored and you think of somebody like oh god we'll splice these two frames together and, and it'll be like that episode of the fucking simpsons where homer falsely gets accused of fucking sexual harassment it's and it's not like that it's just a fucking joke it's just a bit of fun so let's get to this is, we're coming to the end. So let's get to Carpe Donctum. That's a terrible name. Uh, and the, the Trump running forever time meme that you saw in the MSNBC meltdown of the fucking social media summit from Trump. So... Little little bit of info about him, by the way. Carpe Donctum makes all sorts of these memes, right? All sorts of these memes. And he mocks CNN and a lot of these journalist types. And he got banned for doing that. Because, again, they know who to call. We can call Facebook. We can call Twitter. Isn't it incredible, by the way, that the journalists that talk about how dangerous it is they actually got people banned for tweeting learn to code at them. This is a real thing that really happened. If you criticize a journalist, you will be silenced. They will get you. And Twitter will allow them. And Facebook will allow them. And Reddit will allow them. You can't even tell them to get another job. You can't even laugh when the companies that publish their lies and bullshit go under. You're not allowed. They're a protected class. They're journalists, you fool. Don't you understand? They are the fucking last line of defense. Civilization collapses without the fucking bloggers. Didn't you know? So anyway... Uh, Daily Caller ran the story because no one else fucking would. But this is Carpe Donctum. He got banned. He's been banned on Twitter before, back in May. Because he posted another meme mocking someone from CNN. You're just not allowed, guys. Why will you not listen to the rules? 
A Twitter account that President Donald Trump frequently retweets was restored on Friday after a two-day suspension for allegedly violating the company's rules of conduct. His account is in a locked state. He'll be required to delete a tweet that violated Twitter rules before he can be reinstated, a Twitter spokeswoman told the Daily Caller News Foundation, referring to the profile of pro-Trump memester Carpe Donctum. She did not specify which one of Donctum's tweets violated the company's rules of conduct. Donctum, an account known for creating satirical memes and videos mocking CNN and lionizing the president got into a fight on Twitter Wednesday with an account known for trolling Trump. Yes, that was back when the Krasensteins were allowed on Twitter. They got to operate with impunity, every, uh, even though everyone knows they were using bots. They Go look up the Krasensteins, involved with Ponzi schemes. Uh, the, the Twitter account that they turned into hashtag resistance fodder used to be a fucking uh, Justin Bieber fan account. Mental. Anyway, they're banned on Twitter now. Suck all the dicks. Um... Right? Donkdom accused the, uh, uh, anyway, yeah, Donkdom an account of t- creating satirical memes and videos mocking CNN and lionized the president, got in a fight on Twitter on Wednesday. Donkdom accused the account of fraudulently reporting a video that shows a movie character with Trump's face superimposed on his head, pulling a pistol on another character depicted as CNN's Jim Acosta. The video was an altered clip, an altered, not doctored, uh, of the 1970 movie Trinity is Still My Name a spaghetti western film starring actors Terence Hill and Bud Spencer. One scene in the movie shows Hill character repeatedly pulling a gun on another character. The video, which was briefly taken down sometime Friday morning, has now been reinstated. After two days, Twitter's unlocked my account and restored the tweet, Donkdom told them. Right? Uh, And here's his tweet. Twitter's unlocked my account and restored the tweet, uh, uh, which was falsely mass reported and mass flagged. When will they be receiving their suspension for breaking the Twitter TOS? Good day. Uh, never is the answer. I mean, they're not on there now, but they would never have got banned or something like this. Let's have a look at this terrible offensive video that uh, has has to be stopped because it, it mocks j- journalists. Oh, is this the original scene? No, it isn't. I say you've been cheating. Huh? Oh no, I think this is. The, I think I think this is the original scene. This isn't the. Is this not the mocked video? Yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't actually the vi- this is actually the scene from the western. This isn't the, this isn't the mocked one. This is the original. So I can't even show you the fucking mocked one because it's fucking not there. Ridiculous. You're not even a real journalism. So anyway, That's so he's I been mean. banned on Twitter before. He's had all sorts of stuff going on. Um, so he made this meme, which Donald Trump tweeted out, right? And and everyone lost their mind predictably. Uh, it was the one that you saw very briefly at the start. Uh, let me let me see if I can just find um, You're not even the original journalism. here. That's right. And and you just tell me if if this is uh, problematic or offensive or upsetting. Um, here it is, Donald Trump. I've got the tweet uh, of him tweeting it out. So here it is, Donald Trump's Twitter. This is uh, in the Hall of the Mountain King, if I remember correctly. Is that right? Is that what it is? Right. Now, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know anyone could get offended by it. You can see immediately there's a fucking blue check uh, there. Dictator? Question mark? I mean, you know, if I went through all of this, um, uh, the, the, you would find all of the lunatic blue checks in here, right? Like, I, I'm not going to do it. It, it. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. These people are not well. Um, you know, like, it's not their fault. I've told you, it's not anyone's fault. We're all being deliberately driven insane by systems that the human brain was not meant to put up with. Um, and the 24-hour news cycle and the constant crisis and, and, you know, everyone's evil and, you know, everyone's the next Hitler and everyone, you know, you, we're not supposed to live like this. Nobody can function like this. If, you, if, you, if you're too mired in it, you've got problems. Anyway, so that was the video. Um, 
again, why is this worthy of coverage? Well, they seem to take it that uh, Donald Trump was implying by retweeting this video he actually was going to stay in power forever. Right, so Huffington Post, which you can't see here because I always forget it, it fucks up. Take it from me, the Huffington Post headline is uh, Donald Trump running for uh, p president forever. It talks about how bizarre the video is and creates concerns, etc. Uh, Business Insider, I think this one works. Trump tweeted an edited Time magazine. You're going to get bombarded with ads on Business Insider. They're not doing too well. Uh, Trump tweeted an edited Time magazine video showing him as president forever. Uh, president Donald Trump tweeted out a video uh, showing a series of Trump campaign yard signs through the centuries. The edited video shows yard signs reading Trump 24 through to Trump 90,000 and ends with an image of the president over a sign reading Trump forever. Time had tweeted out a different version of it in October 2018 to promote its cover story, How Trumpism Will Outlast Trump. Right? Again, why are we, why are we uh, c covering this? Why are we why are we covering this? Uh, well, look, just look at look at this. So we're covering this. Trump's tweet came just hours after he was accused by columnist E. Jean Carroll of sexually assaulting her in a department store dressing room in the mid nineteen nineties. The White House denies the allegations. Let me let me tell you. Uh, I mean that that that's a whole fucking separate topic. Obviously, have a listen. T check it out if it's credible. She first of all said, right, first of all, she's selling a book. Second of all, she said she wouldn't even pursue criminal charges now uh, because uh, she just doesn't want to, can't be asked. Uh, then on top of that, they had to cut a CNN broadcast where they were interviewing her because, of course, who else would be, where they w were talking about whether, like, about the impact of rape and how traumatic it was. And she said, quote, people think rape is sexy. And they were right. well, this is off. To fucking shut it down. She's a loon. She's got, she, you know, they, they they misuse this poor fucking old lady who's just trying to sell a book uh, to basically, like, fucking humiliate and ridicule herself. There was no due care, no ju none of that. We'll just put her out. And uh, we'll, we'll, look, now she's saying things that are, uh, that, that are, that not only contradict the kind of things a sexual assault victim would say, they're also very embarrassing for her to have to sort of stand by. And lo and behold, she's just disappeared off the face of the earth, hasn't she? Because they've realized they can't put her on TV every week banging on about it. You know, fucking get me Stormy Daniels again, I guess. Get, get me Avenatti, right? Get him going to jail. Anyway, uh, insider.com fucking tweet about it as well um fucking oh wait that's the one we just linked to my bad uh sorry um oh did i do that over business insider or, or does business insider and oh right sorry yeah there's business insider and insider that's like they're cool vertical my bad um so that is the same publication uh but it's okay because uh people uh, people.com picked it up donald trump jokes he'll stay president forever in new video endorsing his 2020 campaign sort of not what happened actually um it, it's it kind of yeah that's kind of a bit of a lie um then look uh, the, it, it describes the video and then it goes in a final note trump included e a reference to eternity and again trump didn't include any of this trump trump didn't make this video trump didn't make this video um trump trump included e a reference to eternity before finishing with one last statement about how long he intends to stay in office trump forever the sign reads the white house did not immediately reply to people's request for comment uh video comes after his kick now we'll just talk about some uh, unrelated shit Blah, blah, blah. Winning the second term. No, 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 no. Like, look how long this goes on for. All predicated just on the fact that he tweeted out a fucking meme. Talking about... It's ridiculous. This is nonsense. Right? And again, Trump didn't make the video. Trump didn't do any of those things that have been attributed to Trump. Basic journalism. Uh, but incapable uh, over at that publication. Now, it got really crazy because off the back of this, needless to say, there were a few of the little intimations, right? Well, Bill Maher, who, by the way, Bill Maher is a fucking coin toss, isn't he? I mean, Bill, Bill Maher is a coin toss. One minute, he's saying ridiculous racist shit, right? You're like, fucking hell, Bill, I thought you were a liberal. The next minute, he's cozying up to fucking 
pr- progressives and lefties and orange man bad and you can't figure him out he's all over the fucking road and it's like listen i've got no problem with bill maher you know i, I find him entertaining uh, i like the format of his show um i i i think i, I think he has no political grounding whatsoever uh i i think i think he's kind of just says whatever the fuck he wants at any given moment this is the guy who sort of mo- he was decided in in the wake of stanley's death to just come out and say people who read comic books are fucking morons and, and kids it's like let, let him let him fucking sit a bit in the ground mate before you come in with your hot takes but whatever it'll be you one day bill anyway cnn had him on uh cnn had him on uh and they got him to basically say the fantasy off the back of you know trump forever fever right basically bill maher repeated this nonsensical fantasy he has that no matter what happens in the election trump just won't go and it's like think think this through so for donald trump to stay in power that would mean the army would have to refuse to throw him. Like, no one else would have to physically remove him. Like, all the state apparatus would have to completely stay working. for. Like, how does this work in America exactly? Like, please let me know. Um, but anyway, um, here's, here's what he had to say. This is, this, is, this is what Trump derangement um, um, syndrome sounds like. This is, this is the, the words of a disease. It's unbelievable. Our political dynamic. Thank you. Yeah. Good, good to you. As somebody who guesses wrong on a regular basis, I respect when people guess right. Give me a feel for what you think about, not necessarily predictions, but what do you imagine happening going forward? In, a, in whatever well, political I mean, way is relevant. One of those things, to take up your point, that I've been talking about for years now, almost three years, uh, that a lot of people are talking about now, is that if he loses Trump, he won't go. I've been saying that since before he got elected, that if he loses the second time, I mean, if he loses the coming election, he and Michael Cohen said that, Nancy Pelosi echoed said that, a lot of people now, and I think that is what we have to worry about, because... A lot of people say, well, yes, it can happen here, meaning fascism, meaning something other than what we, was democracy. Now, I think we're already there. When the President of the United States is saying that the news is the enemy of the people. Right, you need to remember all of the stuff that he says here, because again, it's talking about attacks on the media. I'm going to wrap this segment up with, with just a little bit of perspective that I think is very important. So again, we'll just take it back a little bit. This is what makes Donald Trump a fascist, apparently. Hey, well, yes, it can happen here, meaning fascism, meaning something other than what we, is democracy. Now, I think we're already there. When the President of the United States is saying that the news is the enemy of the people, you know, I have a dictator checklist that I read on my show some. <clears throat> Point of information, Donald Trump has never said the news is the enemy of the people. He said fake news is the enemy of the people. That's the exact quote. Now, you can make it that way you will, because he calls everyone fake news. But he's not saying news is the enemy of the people. He's never said that. He has said that fake news media, quote, is the enemy of the people. Sometimes things that no American president has ever done, but this president does. Appointing your family to key government positions. This is banana republic. So you think he wouldn't leave? That is one of them. I absolutely think he will not leave. Now that would be something, hopefully... Even the great Bill Maher is wrong about the press. Now, this is the this is the bit where it goes really fucking mental. You can't control a guest. A guest might say some batty shit when they come on. Like, you can't control that, right? And sometimes it makes for good television. Sometimes it's awkward. Sometimes it's sad. What you shouldn't do as a journalist on a network TV show is give credence to the batty shit that just came out of your guest's mouth by, like, breaking it down, like... Um, unbelievable oh, uh, unbelievable like cnn it. they can't help themselves you're not even a real journalist that would be something hopefully that's right even the great bill maher is wrong Have about the president night, refusing to accept soon. the results of the election if he loses but what do you think let me know now Maher. uh thanks a lot seth man 57 months appreciate it hope you're doing well dog um just imagine sitting there and going, well, Bill Maher is such a credible political mind. We must, you know, you know, it's not fucking, it's not Chomsky, is it, you're interviewing? You know what I mean? It's fucking Bill Maher, right? And, and, and you, you, the, the great Bill Maher, let's hope the great Bill Maher, Nostradamus of the political world, never gets anything wrong. 
I hope he's I hope, I hope he's not I hope he's wrong this time because if not Donald Trump's going to install himself as a dictator if you, how would that functionally fucking work in America it is so it, it's just stupid like no one's even thought, thought it through for a fucking second so absolute nonsense absolute nonsense now you also remember Bill Maher said He's got a fascist checklist. I've seen his bit. I've seen him on... I, I watch his show. I've seen him do it. Um, where he says, like, oh, saying the news is the enemy of the people. Now, yeah, dictators do do this. Let me tell you what dictators also do, though, by the way. What what they do is... They don't just talk about how the fucking media is their enemy. They shut it down. They take the journalists away. They put them in prison. They kill them. <laughs> That's, you know, like... When that starts happening, right, I'm on board. I'll I'll be, I'll 100% me and Bill will be on the holy shit he's going to stay in power forever train because he tweeted out a fucking meme and he's joking about it, right? But let's just break, let's, let's talk about presidents that have had relationships with, uh, with, with um, media outlets, right? Because everybody who knows anything about the relationship between the White House and journalists knows that it, 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 it started with Bush, it was continued by Obama, and it was way worse under Obama than it was uh, under Trump right now. Trump just talks and talks and talks. That's him in a nutshell. Obama actually leveraged governmental powers, abused the Espionage Act to um, get journalists' records, have them fucking detained, investigated, prosecuted. I remember there was a political commentator who came into my channel last time I even briefly talked about this and said I was completely fucking wrong and there was just no point and it was only a side topic. But, um, you know, incredible how I know about these things because, again, journalism is my shit, right? So let, let's talk about it. First of all, I'll just bring up the Wikipedia page. Um... Which, uh, this talks here about the Obama administration conflict with Fox News. So, I'll take you back to 2009. Now, actually, before I do get into this, and it, it's depressing that you always have to add this caveat. I liked Obama. I've said it a million times. Uh, I think he was an incredible, charismatic politician. I'm not like one of these right-wing guys who's like, fuck Obama, man. Uh, I, you know, my, my politics aren't right-wing. I, I watched Obama take uh, a lot of flack from the Republicans, some of it completely ridiculous. I watched Fox News peddle rumors and stories and bullshit, uh, and Fox News, anybody thinking they're a bastion of journalistic credibility needs a history lesson. Um, but equally as well, for eight years, he, he did get a pass for a lot of things that he did. He got, um, including some ghastly foreign policy, including some, you know, the, uh, ghastly immigration policy. Like, you know, again, Trump is, honestly, for all his talk about how he wants to deconstruct what Obama was doing, he's continuing a lot of it. That's the sad reality, and I think that's why a lot of um, Democrats are so fucking adamant to pin it all on him now. Like, we can fix it now, we can change it now, but Obama was putting kids in cages, if indeed that's what you want to call it. Obama had the fucking overcrowded detention centers you can't even get the dates on the photos right you're publishing shit and saying look we went to a detention center at the border today and look how bad it was and say wait that's an old picture that's actually one from the obama administration and then you just got to style it out and pretend it never happened because of course it never did happen because the media can't be wrong so you know i i, I get the guilt because <laughs> for eight years you let this fucking guy basically just do whatever because he was a beacon and a, and a great representation of everything you want america to be i get it i buy that i almost support that in a way in my own fucked up you know conflicted mind but he did do these things and he absolutely did way worse than donald trump when it comes to treatment of journalists So, in September 2009, the Obama administration engaged in a verbal conflict with Fox News. On September 20th, 2009, President Obama appeared on all major news networks except Fox News. So, he snubbed them. He didn't give them the content. When Donald Trump started to refuse interviews to CNN and MSNBC, what did we see? 
Oh, yeah, that's right. That's him being uh, dictatorial. That's him showing favorites. That's him being against the free press. That's very low level, the roots of fascism. It was a snub made partially in response to remarks about the president by commentators Glenn Beck and Sean Hannity and general co coverage by Fox with regard to Obamacare. Uh, Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace called White House administration officials crybabies in response. Following this, a senior Obama advisor told US News that the White House would never get a fair shake from Fox News. Now, what's actually interesting is, and you can go look this up, uh, Obama, the administration toyed with just banning Fox News flat out from the White House, wanted to do it, and all the other journalists, CNN, everyone else, rallied, right? Because again, they'll take pot shots at each other and call each other liars, but the fraternity's the fucking fraternity, right? We gotta stick together, because how else can we run this shit? Uh, then, uh... They uh, had a secret meeting with Roger Ailes, the uh, founder um, of, of Fox News, uh, to try and smooth it over. Two weeks later, White House officials referred to Fox News as not a news network. Uh, communications director Anita Dunn claimed that Fox News often operates as either the research arm or the communication arm of the Republican Party. Well, this sounds a lot like what Donald Trump says about CNN, frankly. But I mean, I mean what, what's interesting is when, when old Donnie says it, it's evil. When Obama said it, it was the truth. <laughs> and it was the truth. <laughs> you know, and it's true when Don says it now. Like, it's very transparent what you're doing. You're not clever enough to cloak your true intent. Uh, President Obama followed with, If media is operating basically as a talk radio format, then that's one thing. If it's operating as a news outlet, then that's another. And then the White House Chief of Staff, Rahm Emanuel, stated that it was important to not have the CNNs and the others in the world basically be led in following Fox. You're not even a real journalist. So in other words, we put CNN on a higher pedestal than Fox News. Love you, bud. Yep, love you too, man. Thanks for the sub. Within days, it was reported that Fox had been excluded from an interview with administration official Ken Feinberg with bureau chiefs from the White House pool, ABC, CBS, NBC, and CNN coming to the defense of Fox News. One of the major bureau chiefs stated if any member had been excluded, it would have been the same thing. It has nothing to do with Fox or the White House or the substance of the issues. Yeah, we know. Shortly after the story broke, the White House admitted to a low-level mistake, but said that Fox had not made a specific request to interview Feinberg. This is called a lie. Fox White House correspondent Major Garrett responded by stating that he had not made a specific request, but that he had a standing request from me as a senior White House correspondent on Fox to interview any newsmaker at the Treasury at any given time news is being made, which is the understanding all these political journalists of that type have, that when news breaks, you give us some time. Uh, on November 8, 2009, the LA Times reported that an unnamed de Democratic consultant was warned by the White House not to appear on Fox News again. According to the article, Anita Dunn claimed in an email to have checked with colleagues who deal with TV issues and have been told that nobody had been instructed to avoid Fox. We know what keeps coming up, though. Patrick Cadell, a Fox News contributor and former uh, uh, pollster for President Jimmy Carter, said he had spoken with other Democratic consultants who had received similar warnings from the White House. Now, that's the tip of the fucking iceberg when it came to the Obama administration and the shit they used to get into when it came to uh, targeting journalists. Uh, yes, we are going to get into James Rosen. I saw somebody in the chat. I like it. Inform people. It's good. Um, so uh, let me let me just do the whole James Rosen thing, actually. Uh, here it is. Is this is this the write up in The Guardian? Yeah, let's do this first. So James Rosen, again, was a Fox News guy. Um, and he was targeted relentlessly by the, the White House um, because they said he was a co-conspirator in a spying case. The Obama administration had investigated a reporter with Fox News as a probable co-conspirator in a criminal spying case after a report based on a State Department leak. The Justice Department named Fox News Chief Washington Correspondent James Rosen as, at the very least, either an aider, a better, or co-conspirator in a 2010 espionage case against State Department Security, advisor Stephen Jinwoo Kim. The, uh, the accusation appeared in a court affidavit first reported in the Washington Post. Kim is charged with handing over a classified government report in June 2009 that said North Korea would probably test a nuclear weapon in response to a UN resolution condemning previous tests. Rosen reported the analysis on the 11th of June That's under the right. headline, North Korea intends to march UN resolutions with new, uh, nu uh, new nuclear test. 
The FBI sought and obtained a warrant to seize all of Rosen's correspondence with Kim and an additional two days' worth of Rosen's personal mail, the Post reported. The Bureau also obtained Rosen's phone records and used security badge records to track his movements to and from the State Department. So in other words, they lied about this journalist being a spy, abused the Espionage Act so they could spy on him, and, as it happens, skip to the end, this motherfucker was embroiled in this shit for years. This motherfucker was embroiled in this shit for years. And if you know anything about James Rosen, again, daily disclosure, another one of my regs who knows what the fuck's going on. This isn't like some fucking talk radio motherfucker. This isn't an opinion piece throw away motherfucker. This was just a fucking, you know, he's not even partisan in what he does. He just happens to be at Fox. So in, in the same way we talk about Andrew Neal when he does an interview, he keeps it completely down the fucking middle. This guy's like, this is James fucking Rosen. Like, he's a respected dude. And he had unprecedented fucking uh, um, unprecedented access unprecedented sources and these things should be protected and sacrosanct but not to the obama administration they wanted to get to the root of the leak and they abused the espionage act to do it and this guy uh was basically threatened with contempt of court refused to think he couldn't and, and and the worst part he couldn't to talk about the case was to like violate all the fucking laws around the case that he would have been put in jail So uh, the Obama administration did that. And uh, incredibly, people were just not that fucking vocal about it. They just weren't that vocal about it. Uh, the Freedom of the Press uh, Association, they obviously picked up on the story and they fucking talked about it. There's this thing here, uh, basically on the Freedom of the Press Foundation. Obviously, it's a website I know. Uh, Obama used the Espionage Act to put a record number of reporter sources in jail. And this is the other thing he did. It wasn't just the journalists he went after. When he abused the Espionage Act, when he found out it would leak to the journalists, away you go, whistleblower motherfuckers. And he did this in record numbers. The Espionage Act was meant to protect America from terrorists, from spy, from foreign p powers trying to overthrow America to do harm to America. It wasn't to fucking get journalists getting political stories that made the administration look bad. But this was a matter of routine back in the day. And if you want James Rosen's opinion on it, now that he can fucking talk about it, at the height of all the boo-hoo-hooing, remember, all he does is, all Trump does is say, you are fake news. That's it. I haven't seen him invoke the Espionage Act to get anyone's sources yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'd like to be corrected if I'm wrong about that. It sort of would make the uh, argument not stand up quite as much. But this is James Rosen here. Obama treated the media worse than Trump fact right says here despite labeling the reporting of many news stories as fake and calling the media uh and uh, i think it's meant to be an enemy of the american people nice typo when you first sentence siri what's a sub editor um fox news chief washington correspondent james rosen says nothing donald trump has done so far rises to the level of concern he had while barack obama served in the white house uh, rosen recounted in an interview with rich zioli on talk radio 1210 wpht the battle he had with the obama administration over his reporting on north korea uh when he was eventually investigated by the department of justice literally in writing uh, Obama declared me an enemy of the state by designating me as a criminal co-conspirator in an alleged violation of the Espionage Act. That was done in a secret FBI search warrant application submitted to and accepted and approved by a federal judge. Attorney General Holder later acknowledged he personally signed off on that document and he later identified it as the greatest regret of his tenure. Nothing that we've seen so far from the Trump administ administration, at least yet, rises to that level of seriousness or nature in terms of any kind of attack or assault on the press he also states that obama significantly limited access of the media to him in ways that previous presidents had not president obama really circumscribed access on the part of the press to him sometimes even having only a white house photographer present on certain occasions and the rest of us having to rely on the white house uh, photograph president obama had far fewer news conferences than george w bush and immediate predecessors did when Don when president trump holds a news conference as we've seen it will go on for 78 minutes and he will take questions from just about everybody 
So, and then, look, Rosen did admit, however, that many of the errors Trump team has committed with the media have been self-inflicted. President Trump and his aides create some of their own problems with the news media by seeking to propound things that aren't true, such as the size of the inaugural crowd, the relative size of the Electoral College victory, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Donald Trump embellishes some numbers, okay? He's a politician. Three hours ago, Richard said, and I quote, games will be played hmm. after this short amount of politics. Games will be played on, on Gaming Sunday, the day of the day of rest. Appreciate the $10 check. So, um, so yes, turns out that uh, this idea that old Donny Trump and the mean team are fucking with uh, the free press is complete fucking nonsense. There was an opinion uh, piece in, uh, let me, I think it's the New York Times. Um, could be wrong. Just trying to think about the font. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's New York Times font. Uh, so yeah, if Donald Trump targets journalists, thank Obama. This is a long, long uh, article, uh, basically, you know, going over some of the stuff we've already talked about, how, um, you know, he sort of pushed back journalistic freedoms, talks about the, uh, the Jim Rosen stuff, how they finally relented on him. Uh uh, and it, th then he openly talks about how he wanted to crack down on whistleblowers. And uh, in 2013, there was a report issued from the Committee to Protect Journalists, uh, where a former executive editor of the Washington Post, who now is a journalism lecturer in Arizona State, said the war on leaks and other efforts to control information was the most aggressive I've seen since the Nixon administration, when I was one of the editors involved in the Washington Post investigation of Watergate. So again, a little bit of perspective, I think. And just to wrap up the stream, where I always like to wrap up any political stream where we talk about American presidents, the most evil president of all time, George W. Bush, um, actually started the term fake news. <laughs> uh, it, it was actually him. Donald Trump, I've seen, loves to take credit for it. He took credit for it at this uh, social media fucking gathering that he had. Uh, here we go. This is an article in the, in the Nation by Eric Alterman. Uh, in, in it, this is from 2005. I had to dig for this. Um, so uh, it, I'll take you right down. It talks about George Bush and, and his war against the press, which was super mild in comparison uh, to uh, Obama's. But of course, you couldn't be sniffing around. This is this is a, a draft dodger, a guy with fucking, you know, bullshit fucking DUIs and coke problems that all fucking go away. This is a guy who had so many conflict of interest with business in his fucking cabinet and, you know, brought in all the fucking guys that were just fucking there, you know, fought a fucking fake war, refused to testify, at the, you know, on record at the 9-11 commission. You know, there's, there's lots of fucking digging that Bush definitely didn't want to be going on with the, with the free press. and he But he obfuscated it with, with lies. Uh, just a classic cloak of lies. Uh, and we'll, we'll just hit them that way. But here we go. Let me let me find this. Where the fuck was the... Hang on, I'll find the exact spot where he, he literally created the invention of fake news. Because I was as surprised as you. Uh, but basically, the whole concept uh, of fake news... I think it was a little bit up here, actually. Here it is. I think it's a whole segment called fake news. There it is. So, the Bush administration had invested untold millions in video news releases that disguised themselves... This is 2005 disguise themselves as genuine news reports and are frequently broadcast by irresponsible local news programs. Ah! What do you know? You mean the, the, the White House could create something that had the appearance of news and just put it out there and these real news publications would publish them completely whole cloth without any critical application of journalistic ethics to them because they were too fucking lazy oh how very interesting oh how very interesting and then you wonder why we're in the fucking situation we're in now you wonder how it gets to the point uh that we're at now but anyway you, this this article is pretty fucking rad um and anything that's critical of george bush is pretty fucking rad in my opinion uh always, always love to read about that stuff uh, but but you can see you know it talks about phony news reports and you know blah 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 blah. Um, <laughs> shit! Oh shit! I do remember this. I do remember this. Undoubt. Just check this out. 
right? Undoubtedly, the administration's most bizarre effort to manipulate the media was its embrace of former gay prostitute James Guckert, a.k.a. Jeff Gannon, who showed up at the White House under a phony name and worked for a right-wing shell operation that acted less like a news organization than an arm of the Republican National Committee. Publishing articles like Kerry could become first gay president, Gannon's ostensible employer, Talon News Service, employed an editor-in-chief, Bobby Aburl, who served as a delegate to the 1996, 1998, and 2000 Texas Republican Republican conventions into the 2000 Republican National Convention and enjoyed many direct connections to Republicans and right-wing organizations. Press Secretary McClellan would often call on Gannon when he wanted to extricate himself from a particularly effective line of questioning. The words, go ahead, Jeff, signaled that the press corps could be getting into an area that might embarrass the White House or could be discovering a nugget of genuine news. Gannon's ploy might have continued indefinitely had the president not helped make him famous by calling on him on January 26th at a January 26 news conference in order to be served up a softball that mocked Democrats for being divorced from reality. Once exposed, Gannon resigned and Talon folded up shop like a rolled up CIA cover-up. Ridiculous! This is it's just all the same shit, dude. Like, fuck me. Mm. But remember, tr Trump, Trump mistreats the media. We're sending fucking... We're sending former gay prostitutes... Who get to act as fucking political operatives to to deceive the media at press conferences, you know, under the Bush administration. But orange man, bad guys, never forget. This is the darkest day. This is the darkest day uh, right now. Today is the darkest day, and tomorrow will be darker, and the day after that will be darker. And we've got to do something. And it's dark, and nothing can be fixed, and nothing can be said. Meanwhile, you look out your fucking window, and you're like. Where is all the shit happening? <laughs> Where is the end of the world? Where is this apocalypse? Why? Whatever happened to just waiting out a term? Put, throw in some obstructionist politics. Why? Why is it like this? It's fucking insane.